everybody. We're waiting two seconds for Instagram to uh, join us. There it and, is. Uh, I gotta get my bubbles on. Instagram's up, all right? I'm never Instagram's prepared. Up. I'm never prepared, it's horrible. Um, <laughs> so, welcome to Tuesday Tub Talk. I am here today with a very dear and young friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy DeBorno. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, you always say, oh, my old friends. But you oh, know, you yeah. reach a point in life where you really don't want to be referred to as your old friends. You know what I mean? Yes. And so. Um, well, you know, we're old friends. Like, we've been friends a long time. Yes, we've been friends a very long time. 25 years. Really? That's um, it? It just seems like it's been so um, much. Hey, Shirley. And, oh, Maria. Oh, hi. hi. Maria. I seen you for a bit. Um, so, anyway, we met, right? Mm -hmm. on the set of Chicago Hope, which, yeah, and hi, Peggy. Peggy, hi Peggy. Do you guys remember the show Chicago Hope um, in the 90s? Yeah. Um, that's the show Jane and I met on. Yes. Uh, we were background, and then Jane and I also ended up playing, I ended up playing a paramedic a few oh, times Janae on that and show. Oh, and Hi, you guys. Uh, and you ended up playing a nurse several right. times. 14. 14, several. I got 14 episodes. Which wow. Is like, you'd I think did three. You would think I make pretty good money in residuals because 14 episodes after a while. Yeah, and they're like 14 cents. Yeah. yeah. I got a penny. I got a penny residual. I got the penny. You know, everybody talks about getting the penny residual. I got yeah. the penny residual. I've gotten it's some on the wall. In the it's it's insane. You'll get a check for like six cents or something, and then you realize it cost more to mail it to me. I know. I know. They I had, add, I, why don't they let it add up to like ten dollars and then send a check or some no, number I that had, makes sense? I had an idea. What? Which, if somebody's on some SAG, SAG committee that wants to do up. this, Jane's here, about to solve a problem. Here's my idea: any check that you're going to issue that is under a dollar, put it in the old age home thing. Uh, <laughs> the old age home thing? There's an old the age. SAG? They have a SAG old age home. Mm -hmm. Put it there because something like that. Why hasn't this? You know, been, it's just like, a waste. It's like you know, 50 whatever cents to mail, I, then the envelope, and then the check to, to it's like, yeah. it's a waste of money. I got so. these checks for like 12 cents or something, and I, I often wonder how it, ha someone hasn't started a program yet for like all residuals, if you want to opt in, right? right. All, all, hi, Paula. Good. Our costumer. Um, all residuals yeah. go into, like, maybe you have to wait until your, your sum total reaches $10, and then they send you a check. Or everything you get that's under a dollar you donate to some yeah. program like yeah how has this not happened yet i don't know it's really ridiculous because i don't really want to even have to go to the bank to cash the take a picture 14 of it, cent check, 20, you know? 2019 jane take a picture i know it's true but i don't go to the bank that much because bob does it all <laughs> <laughs> these are the perks of a husband he's just a man behind the camera is now bob tonight because today this afternoon because we are doing an early day with Kathy. We are. We are. Um, so when I started working on Crazy Bitches, when I first had the idea for the original, Kathy was over here. You were over here. At, I was giving you some help with exports, or it was some technical thing that I can't even believe I, I knew the answer to. Some technical um, thing. But it had to do with uh, we have to stop now, and you were having trouble. Has oh. this love Yay! Did you? Thanks, Pat. Uh, 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 it's really it gets it gets better. Crazy Bitches season two is. So much fun, um, and I, at the end of this, I will explain to you if you want to watch it now, just for you guys. There's a way to get to it, and uh, I'll explain how. But um, but anyway, so I was like, oh, Kathy, I'm doing this thing, and hey, you want me to write you a role? Kathy's like, yeah, I want you to write me a role. Of course. So the whole crazy, the whole crazy bitch is one. Why wouldn't I want to play with you? I know. Yeah. It was fun. It was season, what is now season one, which is a recut feature, uh, was just so much fun to work on. But also, I was just able to, I wrote for my friends, so I wrote yeah. for you. It was it was a great time. She wrote roles for Fiona her Fiona and Elizabeth. Hi. You brought in, and you know what Jane is particularly really very good at? If you watch Crazy Bitches 1, understand that while Jane and I had known each other for years, and John had known each other for years, he's, a, he's another member in the cast, and we, you know, there were a few other people I'd known um, a bit, but that core group that you put together, which was, um, you know, the friends in the cabin, that core group that yeah, all went, yeah. these were, we were virtually strangers to each other, and it's a really a, testam a testament to your casting abilities and your, you know, choosing of actors and roles and stuff to, 
if our chemistry didn't work out there, that's a lot of people to hope that the chemistry is yeah. going to work out. That's Think true. about that. Six way, of us of that had to look as though we'd been through college together. We were friends. We we had been history. Yeah, history. Yeah. So for six actors to get together and have to find that dynamic amongst them in a believable way and in a way that's natural and flows well is risky. Yeah. Especially when you don't have like tons Naomi, of rehearsal time. Oh, and Naomi stuff. in uh, the UK, Maria and Peggy. Hi, you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, the UK never gets to watch because it's always so late. Oh. So this is you actually. Got, I got your back, UK. Well, you know, yeah, it's interesting. I was thinking about that today because Crazy Bitches season two. It isn't that core, it isn't like one core group of people. It's three different groups of people that come together and the staff. Yeah. So it doesn't have that sort of like, it's a big cast and there's a lot going on. There's a lot of intermingling, mm -hmm. but the, that, that sort of camaraderie that came with doing all these scenes together, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's different. It's different. It's just a different yeah. format, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. So, yeah. but um, but uh, yeah. So when it came to Crazy Bitches Two, I was like, "Hey, you want to do it again?" <laughs> Wilma watched episode one through six and says, "Excellent job! Oh, All God. right, Wilma, you got you know, in. I'm so Wilma, glad." That's I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen Crazy Bitches Two. I know you're gonna see it, it August sixteenth. Yeah, August sixteenth. Oh, no, August seventeenth. August seventeenth. Yeah, we're doing a like a launch party. Premiere. That's where I want to see it first, with yeah. all you guys in person on a big screen. Yeah. Like that'll be super fun. That's where I want everybody to see it first. Yeah. Even though I know it's nerve wracking. Like so I'm wearing my crazy bitches shirt. Can everybody see it? Yeah, it's good backwards, but you can see oh, it. Oh yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. But it still looks good. It's it good. good. All this looks good. What's up, Karen? <laughs> what is that? Uh, I said all this looks good. <laughs> So, um, so anyway, acting is fun, mm -hmm. and we have done some stuff together. We're going to do more stuff together. But you have journeyed into behind the camera in a way that you didn't with We Have to Stop Now or What's Your Problem. So Kathy had this great show, which I wish you would reprise, actually, called What's Your Problem, where she had people write in uh, their, a problem that they wanted an answer to or wanted people to reflect on, and then... You know, she used her therapy back, her therapist background, but had a guest on each week that could contribute. And we'd just go on and you'd talk about, you know, she'd read the letter and we'd talk about yeah, our really perspective wanted, on it. And it was so good. It was yeah, so good. I wanted to create an environment. I remember back then, this was a long time ago, 2007 I started doing that. And I remember back then, the feeling I got when online and interacting with people was how isolated everybody felt out there, um, gay women out there, and even young teenagers mm -hmm. were just kind of needing each other and so I wanted to create something where they felt like they had access to a gay therapist that they could ask whatever they were afraid to ask anybody else but also that they had a gay community of friends to go sit and we would drink a glass of wine and sit on my living room floor because we really wanted yeah. it to be casual you know that casual. Yeah. And so yeah I loved doing yeah. that I, I really I did one for the touch uh huh. You did with, with Tracy Dinwiddie, and I really, I really enjoyed it. Like I felt a, a bit of satisfaction at the end. Yeah. Because I felt like the letter was written by somebody who was experiencing some, experiencing something that I could relate to, that I understood. I understood it was a drug issue, and <laughs> I understood it. But um, but I just thought it was so. It was just such a wonderful way for everybody to have an opportunity to get back a little bit as a guest on your show. Yeah. And I really was sorry that it went. Yeah, right. it, the only reason it did is because it, uh, it took a lot of time to do, and nobody was paying for that time. So eventually, no matter how much you love doing something, eventually you just can't anymore. Right. Because you have to go make a living. Because you have to make a living, yeah. which is actually what you're you're doing now. I, I you know, yeah. One must. <laughs> One must. Kathy's making well, a living. Or we go under. Um, but yeah. it's been an interesting journey to where you are right now because, yeah. you know, Kathy's a licensed therapist. And a number of years back when we were doing Crazy Bitches, really, I guess, you had a practice. Mm -hmm. And then a practice. she left that practice to go pursue some things that were important to her. Mm -hmm. One of which was this documentary. Documentary, and Which you uh, might have seen, some of you might have seen the trailer for it. When some of you may have seen the trailer for it. Um, that was a really, it, this has been a quite a long journey and I'm glad I'm here today. And part of what I told Jane that I felt I had to do was was at least give an update on this because the last time I was around or anytime you've seen me around in our online community, 
I've been talking about this project, this documentary, um, that is largely uh, exploring sexual assault and cold murder cases in our country and um, it just goes deep down that rabbit hole of looking at the ju judicial system on that side of things and a personal experience that I had testifying against a person like this and anyway and sort of meeting all the women that testified against. I started this documentary there mm -hmm. that was in 2013 over time I, I thought I would start it I, I thought I'd make a 90 minute feature documentary over time, it became eight hours of television that I sold to TNT, which was fascinating and wonderful and exciting and offered me a much larger budget to go out and, and work on these murder investigations. And so many exciting things happened. We moved five cold murder cases forward. One of them um, I got to solve, which was probably the most exciting moment of my entire life. Yeah. Um, that happened through the, this process. And just to let you guys know, <laughs> we finished making eight hours of TV and then the production company I was working with ended up at odds with the executive at TNT that they were working with and the whole thing got locked up. Welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood. Yeah. So, Fiona says we love you in Australia, Kathy. Oh, thank uh, you, Fiona. That's so nice. That's nice, nice to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I am by no means done with this. Um, that was a, a real blow, and I got n the wind knocked out of my sails, and I worked so hard on this, and then got that far, and someone was like, "Sorry, ripping the rug out from yeah. underneath you," and back to zero. And I saw I saw the rough stuff, and it was really good. I mean, I thought it would have, you know, with with a finer, you know, if they had not taken it in a particular direction. With I a didn't little have finer, the right leadership. Here's yeah. what happened: when I partnered with this production company, who's when I partnered with this production company, they were the, it's run by these two brothers, um, uh, and when I partnered with them, they were so excited, they shared my vision, everything was aligned, we vibed, everything was wonderful. We pitched it to a variety of networks, we got offers from almost all of them, it was like this really unheard of like excitement about this project, right? And um, for whatever reason, these guys wanted wanted to go with TNT. They felt like it was the right place for the show. This was their area of expertise. I'd never made a TV show before. Well, there, the woman, it was headed by a woman. So headed you by had a woman. some who, really reasons to feel very yeah, protected I did. In the there process. was a woman named, uh, in, at TNT who, who came and had a meeting, one of the second meetings with me while I was trying to decide what network to go with, who really, I thought we had this really the same vision of empowering women and changing the world with this story. And then it became quite a different thing once we started making the show. And they were pushing it in a direction Karen of, O'Donnell's thank you, stick with it. Karen. I plan to. Um, they, they were pushing the show in, in the area of a reality show. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be strictly documentary, investigative journalism, integrity. That's what I was making. I had no interest whatsoever in making a reality show. Long story short, they couldn't push me in that direction. I couldn't get them to go fully in the direction I wanted to, but I did get them to make something I could live with. Yeah. I could live with it. Yeah, and it's, it was good. It, it's not exactly what I wanted to make, but it was still important and it was going to get out there. And then this whole, it was the egos of the guys at the production company in a pissing contest with the ego of the guy at TNT, and they killed each other off. Yeah, you know, and unfortunately, it's not an uncommon story. I mean, that's no. the worst part about it. I mean, it would be nice to say, oh, it, you know, that was just this one particular little group of people, but this kind of thing happens very rare, often, and sometimes it's just on an early level before you're too far in, and sometimes it's at a further down level. And they used to say that um, Harvey Weinstein, we were editing of, the final, uh, all the episodes yeah. are locked except the last one. We're yeah. about to lock the last episode, yeah. and they were like, "No, nope, not going to run it." And this was yeah. just, just to get back at each other. No, I know. But you know, Harvey Weinstein used to buy things and then shelve them. Of course, yeah. He would buy a film just to shut it down, and then just to shut it down. So there was, there's a lot of films that never got seen because, because well, the project of competition, like the, or he just wanted to close out the competition. A project like this. I was extremely careful before partnering with anyone because I wanted to keep control over what I felt was important about it. I didn't right. want it to get pushed in salacious directions or sensational directions until it came to a point where I couldn't do it alone anymore. Partnered with these guys. This was my basic talking point of every meeting, mm -hmm. right? It's, this vision is so important. Protecting this is so important. Everybody was all in, all in, all in. 
for what to happen on this project to happen to this particular project yeah. really was shocking to me. Yeah. Um, it was ah uh, squiggle. Hey squiggle, I will, I will. So anyway, long story short, because I'm I, one day I will tell all the details of this story because I because think it's important. Because what? you're going to start. I'm going to. Is it a podcast? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to start a. <laughs> I'm going to tell the story in a podcast. Why? Podcasts are very accessible and and people are loving them now. Yeah. So I want it to be heard by a lot of people. But also because I can keep it, I could tell the story I know needs to be told. I could keep it in my control. I could make, I could feasibly make this happen. I'm also going to make the 90 minute feature I originally was going to make with all the footage that I shot for three years before I partnered with people who killed the whole thing. I'm going to get back on my feet and make that. But what, what's happened since the end of 2017 when I wrapped with those people is I've just been having to find my life all over again. I've had, a, I've had to start from zero and create a foundation. So I went back to my private practice, yeah. which I love. I love being a therapist. Yeah. And I have a, a new position with my alma mater at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Yeah, it's very cool. I, I love it. It's um, There's a location here in LA, a location in New York where I graduated from. And just this year, they've um, started a program for mental health support for the students because you know this as, yes. as well as anybody else. Yeah. Acting is an extremely intimate process. Brings the up whole, a lot of stuff. Brings up a lot of stuff. The whole schooling of it is about breaking yourself down into pieces and taking a good look. And that just necessarily cries out for mental health support if you want to keep those people successful and moving forward. And, right. And, um, and so I'm, I'm working there uh, part-time doing therapy with those students. Well, they're 18 to 25. They're full-blown adults, but well, they feel like so, my kids. Yeah, yeah. I love them. I think it's great. I love this sort of journey. What's up, Bob? Pat Lawton says, podcast, great idea. Yeah, yeah I'm, so I'm going to tell you the whole story. Now there's a story within a story, and so I've been ruminating on how do I do this? What's important about this? How do I tell this piece? How do I tell that piece? So it's taking me a minute. I'm a ruminator. Yeah, no, I'm mean, And it's you taking have to. me a minute to get back on track because that really knocked yeah. me off track, the wind out of my sails, everything. Yeah. It was awful. Well, you know, it's interesting because I think that, if I remember correctly, you were going through a lot of this when we were shooting Crazy Bitches season two. Crazy Bitches season two was shooting right, right as we wrapped that right. show, right. and when all of this started to get right. unfolded, you were under so much stress, and <coughs> I was like, "Am I going to have to replace you? Are you going to be able to do this?" Because oh it, was, it was up, and then on top of that, Kami was sick. Comet, my beloved Comet. Yeah. There's yes, some, right at the same time yeah. as the show got sort of squashed for really egotistical, stupid, shallow reasons. Um, by really petty people. Comet uh, was diagnosed with cancer, had her spleen removed, and right after her spleen was removed, she had sort of a bounce back for about six weeks, and that was well yeah. during that bounce back that we shot Crazy Bitches too. Yeah, it was really cool actually because she brought Comet to the set every day, and um, he, she sort of bounced, like she sort of like, there were other dogs there. Because it was a kind of a crazy shoot because there was no one to wrangle the dogs, but there were ranch dogs. That Everywhere, were just, like just a huge property. Yeah, and they would just run through the scene and run the, you know, and... And the comet would run you know, through with a sweatshirt like, on. And everybody would be like, there's no way. I'm like, after a while, I'm like, don't stop because we gonna, we'll never get through this if we're stopping every time a dog runs through. <laughs> but Carmi was important because, uh, or significant, because I'd, ha I'd have to stop for her because she'd come, she would. She'd come through with she had a t-shirt on. She was wearing a red sweatshirt. And she walked very slowly. <laughs> Yeah. Like it turned into a whole thing. She was but, recovering from surgery, yeah. but she had this like she was between the recovery yeah. and the, the eventual decline where she yeah. felt really good. And, and I, I got think to see she her liked run those around. dogs and you know like, yes. I think they really brought out something for it her. It was kind of a last like, hurrah for her. She got to yeah. run around on that property yeah. and play with those dogs and it made me cry because so I knew what was coming and, and then on February thirteenth. Talk about the soft twenty eighteen uh, I lost yeah. comic. Um Yeah. And but then you got yeah. Buddy Guy. And then I got Buddy Guy. He's a great little guy. He's so cute. He's so cute. He he really has a lot of Comet's essence in him. Yeah. He's a very zen sort of dog the way she was. Like he'll just yeah. sit very still and gaze into your eyes. Yeah. Very intently, eye contact. Very trusting too. I mean he, he comes over, he'll just be like, ah, okay. He, he'll this sit is where still I am now. And you won't hear a peep from like him. Yeah. He's just a, a zen little guy. Yeah. He's much smaller than Comet, so I'm getting he is used, smaller, to get used to that. But he's not big enough for me to like I can pick him up, but I can't, like, it's not like a full-on, 
Yeah, it was a little, little bit of a struggle. Yeah, he's only 22 pounds. But, oh, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, he just feels bigger. That's yeah. Like, Doug, Winston, Comet was 65, Winston was 18. So that's, oh, well, yeah, yeah. That's a huge difference. But, yeah. buddy guy's super cute. The cutest. Super cute. So we're, oh, oh, oh. Kathy just lost her water. Clean um, up aisle two. So we're, we're edging towards the end of the show. I want to make sure that I take a second to explain to the people who want to go on and see Crazy Bitches before the official release. Um, if you go to uh, crazybitchesdigital.com, I think it's Crazy Bitches Digital. It might be, it might be Crazy Bitches di Digital TV. TV. If you don't know. But uh, I just changed the title. I just know. changed the domain. Anyway, Bob's going to find it and put it up for you. Um, mm. You go there, and then in the top it'll say Buy Digital. If you go there, you can pick on it, what, what they're calling subscriptions. Because it's the only way I could uh, do it kind of uh, under the radar. I had to do this sort of su subscription-based thing. You click on whatever subscription you want. It will take you to a, a login page where you, you ask to become a site member. I'll get a notice. I will approve it. And then you can go on. She'll do a background then, check, mull it over if she's yeah, going. Yeah, see, check your driver's license, <laughs> and then and then you'll be able to go on and watch. You know, pay. You have to pay, but you'll go on and watch the episodes at your leisure, and you can go on anytime. It's uh, unlimited access for an unlimited amount of time. So, um, to go if you want to, if you want to check it out, this season two, episode one is on an event page on the Crazy Bitch Nation. Um, the Crazy Bee Nation Facebook page, which is where you guys all are right now. And, uh, yeah, you know, let me know what you think. It's uh, yeah, scary. Yeah, go check it out. And if you guys want to, um, you know, hop on board and just keep track to follow the podcast or what I'm doing, just keep following me on Facebook. Um, you know, Kathy, Kathy, just Kathy DeBono. Yeah. You know, um, my, my, my handle on all of the social media is just Kathy DeBono, so you can find me that way. But also B -E -B -U -O -N -O. my... B-E-B-U-O-N-O. Kathy with a C, y'all. Yeah. And plus, my website is just kathydebono.com. If you go there, you can see what my, you know, what, what I'm doing in my practice now. I'm specializing in treating trauma and diagnosing psychopathy. So, yeah. If you're curious and you want to just check it out, you can find me there. Yeah. And, and stay in touch because I'd love for you to hear the whole story once I'm able to tell it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 really an interesting journey that all of us go through. I mean, I think life takes you on an interesting journey. I don't want to ex say that anybody's experience is different because I think it's the same for everybody. The more risk you put yourself in, the more like emotional risk that you put yourself in when you want something to, to happen, you work very hard for that thing to happen. And I, I did a blog about this actually this week and it's not quite the same, but this idea of like, you know, you reach a point where it has to go out in the world, in your case, it, it ended abruptly, so you didn't even have that experience of nausea around actually releasing it and seeing what people think. But then there's the next step, too, is like once something goes out, you know, you kind of can't sit in private anymore and go, it was, it's great. Yeah. It's really great. And when it's out, you're going to love it. You know, you kind of have to just roll. Hey, Mickey. Oh, you, yeah, you liked the first episode. I know, I saw the post, and I thank you for that. It was, it's fun. Have you seen the first episode? Nothing. It's on the event page. I have to go see. Yeah. This will be what I do after work tonight. I'm going to the American Academy tonight. And if anybody wants to go audition for the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in L.A., I'll be your therapist while you're a student there. There you go. Yeah. I think it's been, that's really interesting, too, that... Uh, oh, it's uh, fascinating work. Yeah, just the way kids, you know, you were saying earlier how they... They're not like people who are like, okay, I have a problem I'm coming to the therapist for, but they're really like, I'm ready to access everything and yeah. I just need guidance, you yeah. know, get me there. Actors so they're like want to do joy their joyfully emotional. Yeah, so it's it's sort of as a therapist, it's a joy to work with because it's very gratifying when people want to do that work. They want to access their emotional world. You know, I was telling Jane before this, and then we're gonna let you go. Uh, a lot of people go to therapy because they want to learn how to not feel the bad stuff. And that's actually not the way it happens. That's not an option. There's other options to getting feeling good, but not feeling the bad stuff is not how it works. Um, and when you're working with actors, they want to feel everything and they want to know how it works and they want to learn about the nervous system and they want to practice it. And so it's kind of yeah. gratifying to just 
have that initial resistance out of the way, you know, and they come in going, teach me how to feel. It's kind of good. Yeah, yeah. I bet. And it's yeah. also that at the Paulette's, you oh. and Comet always made me happy on set. Paulette, uh, you made people happy on set. Yeah. But pa thank you for saying that. My little Comet. Yeah. Well, it was nice to have her around. Oh, it was a, she was a soulmate, for so sure. sweet, sort of a spiritual gentleness to her, you know, that was very much great. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just like, I, I think the, the new stage that the young actors are into is kind of a refreshing reminder of why why you got into the business in the first place, especially yes. when you get hit with so many things. It's like, oh my God, yes. you, how you, much more can I take? I mean, you know. You hit the nail on the head. They're, they're just starting and they're so hopeful. Yeah. And they, they haven't, they haven't been crushed, yet. crushed or trashed. <laughs> and, you know, I try to help them learn that if and, if and when that happens, it's only part of the process. Don't let it be the ending. You know? right. I'm trying to help them foresee it coming, not be so sideswiped by it. Right. You know, Understand that there's just as many um, people who would manipulate you, steal what you have, stab you in the back, as there are people yeah. who would love you, want to work with you, and be your, your in partner with integrity. Yeah. And uh, just expect yeah. to have to navigate it. Yeah, and just and be prepared for disappointment because there's no way uh, yeah. you're not going to be faced with it. I mean, it's a very rare person that something, they step out into their chosen field and then boom, it's it's out there. You've got people who accept you, people who don't. You go on auditions yeah. and you get jobs or you don't. And you know. You, you make your own things and they then they don't do well or they do well. But it's, you're always at risk because you're always putting your, your your heart on the line a little bit. You have to. If you're, yeah, if yeah. you're going after your dream, it's necessarily a part of your heart. If Which you're is why therapy is so yourself important. In. So important. To understand how to self-monitor so you don't let those highs yeah. and lows really drive, yeah. you know, drive your experience. The percentage of people that go to therapy because they are mentally ill is one thing, but there's a tremendously large percentage of people that go to therapy it has nothing to do with a mental illness or even like an obstacle or problem. It has yeah. to do with just growth and expansion yeah. and evolution and consciousness and, and they want to have that whole process. Yeah. And for actors, it's brilliant to do that. Yeah, I think it was really great for them to instigate, instill, instigate, no. Instill? No. Oh, God damn it. Whatever. Create. Start up. Start up. <laughs> Ima imagine my delight when I was like, I gotta, I gotta find a job while I build my practice. Yeah. I gotta find something that gives me an income right away. Imagine my delight when I saw the American Academy of Dramatic Arts is looking yeah. for a therapist. I wrote them a letter right away. I was like, yeah. I graduated from the American Academy. I've been a therapist for 18 years and I got a phone yeah. call right away. They were like, boy, was your letter a breath, breath of fresh air. Yeah, I bet. It's such you two understand. different worlds, but I know yeah. both of them. It's, it's a kind of an interesting sort of, it's like with directing because I, when I'm directing actors, I've also been an actor, so... I understand how to, yeah. what they need in yeah. order to get them where they're going in a way that they feel safe and protected because I think that's important. Absolutely. Initiate! Initiate. <laughs> yes! Oh, you know, that's it was funny. A, it was a word it was that started I with an in. in. Yeah. Um, anyway, it is <laughs> the end of it's the, the end episode, of the world which is so sad. Kathy has to go off and teach her beautiful. Uh, I have to go work with therapize her beautiful young. And you know people. any actors out there that would maybe like help accessing the affect or the emotion yeah. of a scene or an audition? Um, what the, the trauma therapy that I practice is a perfect model for also doing that. I do a lot of that with these actors too. Yeah. They're having a hard time reaching the affect or connecting to a feeling. So if anybody out there would like a little help with that, you can contact me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Soft release is happening. If you don't want to go through all of that, the official release is August 16th, and the uh, trailer should be out. We're waiting. We're going to do an exclusive release, and I don't know with who yet, but we're waiting for that. But it, that should be out soon as well. And um, we're going to have like a little launch party and you know screening on the 17th. So I'm yeah. sure you'll hear all about that. And can, uh, they, can they come to it? No, it's oh. it's, it's a closed. Screening. Sorry, guys. It's, I, I would alarm. totally do it if we had been able to afford a big theater, but yeah. we aren't in a big theater, so I have to get the cast and crew and guess their guests in. And by the time I'm through cast and crew and their guests, we're pretty tapped out. But um, but we will we'll, we'll live stream from there and have pictures and we'll try to share some of the experience with you. And 
And anyway, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in, even at this yeah. odd hour. I just want to say it's really nice to share this with you. Jane and I have been friends for 25 years. Jane was literally one of the first friends I made when I moved out here from New York. And our the longevity of our relationship is so special to me. Me too. You, you can't reproduce it. You can't fake it. It's just there's something... There's something so awesome about it, and I, I appreciate it so, so much. So, I know I tell you that all the time, but I wanted to tell you in front of all of your audience, too. I appreciate, as well, you and our friendship. Good. It's a safe space. Yeah. Uh, okay, you guys, I adore you. We'll see you next week, Tuesday, at the normal time at 6 p.m., when my guest is Jen Winters, oh. who is a comedian and actress and also a fantastic masseuse. <laughs> but a, a comedian, yes, actress, she is. and we'll find out what else. But and she's, yoga, she's yoga funny teacher. and beautiful, and yoga teacher. But uh, join me next week so you uh, get to know her a little bit. She's very cool. Love you guys. <laughs> <laughs>